They kill more people every year than brush fires, shark attacks, cyclones, and floods combined in Australia alone. Here's how to survive a riptide. Today's video was produced due to high demand by our subscribers. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, be sure to write your suggestions below. Rip tides, also known as rip currents, are dangerously strong sea currents that pull you away with ease from the shoreline of a beach. They're formed by strong winds pushing water towards the shore. Tropical cyclone winds push waves up against the shoreline even if they're hundreds of miles away, so rip tide warnings are often the first indication of a nearby hurricane. They can reach speeds of up to 8 feet per second, which is faster than any human being is capable of swimming. Rip tides can occur at any beach where there are breaking waves, such as oceans, seas, and large lakes. They're most common on the east and west coasts of the US, as well as the Gulf Coast and in Australia, because 80% of all lifeguard rescues on the beach. The most common victims of riptide deaths are those with limited water skills and those who panic, even when in shallow water. The first sensation felt once you're caught in a rip is that of being dragged downwards and away from shore. This causes people to panic and fight against the current, causing them to exhaust themselves and tire from swimming against the flow, ultimately leading to death by drowning. If you're caught in a rip, remember the three R's. Relax, raise the alarm, and wait for rescue. It's extremely crucial that you do not panic. If you can stand, wait and don't swim. If you can't reach the ground, save energy by staying afloat, preferably on your back. Raise the alarm by waving your arms or yelling for help. This is especially important for those who don't know how to swim or are starting to feel tired. Those who can swim should swim parallel to shore until they're free of the rip, then head for shore. Do what you can to stay afloat in order to wait for rescue from a lifeguard or aid to arrive to bring you back to safety. Now what do you think is worse and why? Developing Lesh-Nyan syndrome or being infected with leprosy? 